Hi, my name is Fiona. I'm a composer, pianist, and educator. And in this video, I'm going to give you six tips for composers. So whether you're an amateur composer, intermediate, or a professional level, these are six tips that I use regularly when I am working on a commission or a project or a film um, that help me kind of structure my piece and give me ideas and um, inspiration. So number one, when I first start to compose a piece, I will actually flood my mind with ideas. Um, I'll listen to lots of music, I will watch a lot of films, have lots of experiences, talk to people, um, fall in love, fall out of love, anything that will kind of give me emotional juice to kind of have something to compose for. It needs some sort of thing to kind of compel you or inspire you to compose. So I'll, I'll just flood my mind with ideas. Um, even if I, you know, think that like certain things won't inspire me, I'll actually, you know, just listen to as much music, watch as much, um, you know, different films and stuff like that, uh, just to kind of um, give me ideas. And the cool thing about being a composer is that you can't just compose, right? You need life experience. You need something to kind of compose for, or something that's kind of like compelling you to do it or inspiring you to compose. Otherwise, it's gonna feel like an exercise. It's gonna feel forced. So if you can have some sort of emotional juice behind what you're doing, that's really going to help. Number two has to do with knowing the instruments you're writing for and knowing the players you're writing for. So are you writing for a high school concert band? Are you writing for a college level percussion ensemble? Are you writing for an elementary school orchestra? Um, these things really can change how you approach your piece and how you compose your piece because you don't want to be writing music that the players can't play. So, you know, you might be writing something that's super difficult that only the San Francisco Symphony can perform um, and your players are actually players that uh, are not going to be able to sight read the music. So it's better to write something that is playable than something that is too difficult where the players are struggling to play. And I've been guilty of this. I've been um, I've written music that was way too complicated for the players and uh, the piece didn't come out exactly as I had thought it would come out. So that's important. Know the instruments, know the ranges of the instruments, know the timbres, know what's possible for each of the instruments that you're playing. Even uh, try to uh, play on that instrument if you can. Talk to someone who's performing on that instrument to give you ideas on uh, what is possible and what isn't possible. Number three has to do with composing freehand. So it's good to kind of get all your ideas out in the beginning. So it's almost like a stream of consciousness. If you're like writing in a journal or something where you're just like getting all your ideas out, even if you think they might not be useful later on, it's good to just get those ideas out. And um, you can always cut the fat later. You know, Brahms had a, an interesting quote that I really resonated with. So he said, it's not hard to compose, but what is fabulously hard is to leave the superfluous notes under the table. So it's not hard to get the ideas and to kind of, you know, write stuff out, but what's hard is kind of knowing what to leave out of the composition to make the story really succinct and effective and to best tell your story musically. So number four has to do with using less ideas. You want to have an idea of what you want the audience to remember from your piece. And I usually try to stick to two or three main ideas, sometimes more, sometimes less, of, you know, it could be a motive or a gesture that I'll use in a piece that I want the audience to remember. Because if you use too many ideas in a piece, it's just going to be this giant smorgasbord of ideas and there's not going to be an identity that the audience or the listeners can really hang on to. So you want to think about two or three ideas that you can really stick to and develop. Um, and those are like like characters in a film. It's not there's not going to be a million main characters. You're usually going to have you know one or two main characters in a film, and those are going to keep the story really together, and the piece will have a, a certain identity to it. So number five has to do with structuring your piece. So what I like to do in the beginning is I will actually sketch out like a timeline of my piece. So if I want it to be like a nine minute piece, I will uh, create, you know, maybe it could be a very abstract drawing where I'm like writing out my ideas and at 
minute number three, this event's going to happen. The the drums are gonna get, the timpani's gonna get really big and, and the chimes or something. And then at minute five, this is going to happen. This is a big event. And then at um, minute nine. So I like to use prime numbers in my structure. And the structure of a piece is really important because it gives you, um, it kind of lets you know where things are going to happen, where the big moments are going to happen in the piece. Otherwise, it's really easy to just keep rambling on and not really know where you're going in a piece. There's There's been many times where I've composed and I've just kept rambling on because I didn't really have a uh, structure. And I actually like to use absolute time. So I'll, I'll say like, okay, at, at three minutes, this event's going to happen and it's gonna build up. This is gonna happen at uh, minute five, then it's gonna maybe pull back. And it just be a very broad idea of what the structure could be like. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, set in stone, but just something that kind of gives you an outline of the piece, kind of like a roadmap to help you compose. And John Cage would always use things like prime numbers to help him structure his piece. So he, he kind of did the, at minute three, minute five, uh, minute seven, certain events would happen. So number six is don't compose just at your laptop. When you compose at your laptop, and I know it's easy, I've done it before, it's, it's, um, you can hear the playback, but the thing is when you enter your notes into the notation software is that it's all gonna sound equally good. I mean, it's not gonna sound amazing, it's not gonna sound real, but the thing is the playback system falsely gives this idea of, oh, anything you put in there is, is playable. Um, especially pizzicato, I've noticed, uh, sounds really good in notation software, but it's actually really hard to pull off because it's not always going to be that um, consistent sounding. So I recommend writing away from the laptop. So if you play a certain instrument, maybe write at that instrument. I personally like to write at the piano. I'll sketch out ideas at the piano. I'll use my voice. And that way you're really embodying what you are composing. And I always try to do that in the beginning. I always try to compose, get my ideas out at the piano first or, or using my voice and I'll do it freehand. I'll actually write it on um, staff paper before I actually plug it into the notation software. And that way I know you know, how I want the melody to sound. I don't want to just kind of mess around with notes and kind of trial and error. I mean, there's there's time for that too, but I always like to, to really sit down and flesh out my ideas at a piano, because then I feel like the ideas flow better when I'm away from my laptop. So there you go. Those are six tips that I uh, recommend for composers that will help you compose and uh, flesh out your ideas in an effective way. and. I've used all of those ideas in all of my compositions. So thanks for joining me. See you next time.